of the College of Health Leaders. I am pleased to be joined by Marianne Walker, Chair of our Board of Directors, to host along with me this evening's event. We begin by respectfully acknowledging that we're hosting today from the traditional territories and ancestral lands of Indigenous, Métis and Inuit people. We invite you to take a moment to reflect on the culture importance of these lands as we honor those who have walked before us along with those still to come and to reaffirming our commitment to forging culturally safe relationships on pathway towards reconciliation. Please join me in also acknowledging the Indigenous culture of knowledge sharing that leverages collective experiences and allows people to learn from one another. It is in that spirit of mutual respect and collaboration that we come together today. We are delighted to host this virtual celebration for the Canadian College of Health Leaders National Awards Program. This is the second year that we're hosting the celebration as a virtual event. We certainly appreciate everyone's cooperation and we thank the award recipients and sponsors for allowing us into their homes via teleconference tools. Through this Honouring Health Leadership Celebration, we recognize the contributions of some of Canada's most outstanding healthcare leaders and innovators. The National Awards Advisory Committee provides oversight and monitoring of the college's National Awards Program. On behalf of the college, I'd like to express our appreciation to the committee members for their dedication to further improving the college's National Awards Program. Thank you. Merci aussi aux nombreux, nombreux membres des comités de sélection de notre programme de prix. Thanks to all award selection committee members. And thank you to all the sponsors, nominators, nominees, and those who have supported the awards program. We encourage you to download and read our 2021 Leading Practices booklet to learn more about those being honored this year and to consider how you could implement some of the inspirational projects and initiatives in your own organization. The booklet is available on the resource tab of this virtual platform and on the CCHL website. We continue to build out the Canadian College of Lead Health Leaders as a community of support for our members and for healthcare leaders across the continuum of care and across the country. Our intention is to provide a balance of traditional content, education material that also provides support, coaching and advice to those who are feeling the effects of the pandemic and are most in need of a helping hand. We understand that more than ever, leadership in healthcare really matters. Nous tenons à remercier tous les membres du Collège, les travailleurs de la santé, nos partenaires de l'industrie et les leaders qui se dévouent et travaillent activement pour gérer la crise de la pandémie. Nous sommes fiers de l'énorme essor que nous connaissons grâce au succès de nos membres et au travail incroyable qu'accomplissent nos bénévoles et notre personnel. Together, we continue to promote lifelong learning and professional development while recognizing leadership excellence. On behalf of the college's board of directors and its membership, I'd like to thank 3M Canada and Johnson & Johnson Medical Devices Companies for their co-sponsorship of this virtual celebration. We are proud to work with such partners as they provide us the opportunity to celebrate and showcase outstanding individuals, teams and organizations who make a difference in their communities. Healthcare leaders. We are delighted to co-present along with Johnson & Johnson Medical Device Companies the 2021 Honouring Health Leadership Virtual Awards Ceremony. We're pleased to support the Canadian College of Healthcare Leaders to provide a platform to recognize and celebrate outstanding individuals, teams and organizations. Hopefully we'll be able to see each other in person soon. 3M has been a proud partner with the Canadian College for 27 years. And once again, we are delighted to be recognizing excellence in health leadership. As I did last year, I also want to take a moment to recognize all of our healthcare heroes, frontline workers, healthcare leaders, and healthcare organizations for the work they are doing to battle COVID-19, protect Canadians, and support the global response. It is in times like this that we work best together to overcome challenges and improve our systems, processes, and patient outcomes in the future. Congratulations to all of this year's awards recipients, 
and thanks to all health leaders for your contribution to Canada's health systems. Johnson & Johnson Medical Devices Companies of Canada are pleased to co-present, along with 3M Canada, the Canadian College of Health Leaders 2021 Honouring Health Leadership Virtual Awards Ceremony. We are truly proud to showcase these recipients, not just for winning their respective awards, but for making a difference in their communities, in their organizations, and most importantly, to patients and their families across Canada. A year ago, when this forum flipped necessarily to virtual, I'm not sure any of us anticipated being in the same medium a year later. You know, while the year has been a trying one on almost any level, uh, what it has acutely highlighted is the importance of strong leadership in the healthcare space. <clears throat> As we collectively endure a difficult third wave here in Canada, Johnson & Johnson is proud to play a role and continue to advance hospital-based care any way we can. And we're equally poised to work with you, our health leaders, to tackle the new challenges thrust so swiftly upon us now and into the future. We offer our heartfelt congratulations to all of this year's award recipients who truly received a masterclass in learning how to lead through ambiguous and uncertain times. You are remarkable difference makers. Thank you to our co-sponsors for your support. Our virtual ceremony tonight will be divided by award categories. We will start by presenting the college awards and then move on to the sponsored individual awards, the team and organization awards, the 3M Health Quality Team Awards, and we will conclude with the Robert Wood Johnson Awards. Marianne, you have your dress on, I have my tux on. Let's get the show on the road and let's get started. We're first going to start with the CCHL Distinguished Leadership Award that honors a champion of performance improvement. Winners of this prestigious award are passionate and visionary leaders who have led transformative change, demonstrated exemplary engagement and collaboration, and a dedication to building leadership capacity. This award honors senior leaders who demonstrate a commitment to lifelong learning, are recognized by their peers for their passion for health leadership, and have made a lasting contribution to their communities. Thank you very much to Stryker Canada for sponsoring this award. And I would now like to welcome Lindsay Williams, Vice President, Managing Director and Government Affairs at Stryker Canada to make this presentation. Thank you, Ellen. It's a pleasure to be with you today. Stryker Canada is pleased to support the CCHL National Awards Program as sponsor of this prestigious <laughs> award. We're proud to announce that Mr. Ron Noble has been named recipient of the 2021 CCHL Distinguished Leadership Award. Ron is the president and CEO of the Catholic Health Association of Ontario and a CCHL fellow. He has over 35 years of executive leadership experience within the healthcare industry, encompassing <laughs> both the public and private sectors and has provided leadership in many settings, including the Academic Health Science Center, Community Hospital, Long-Term Care, Community-Based Healthcare, Private Healthcare, and Consulting Environments. On behalf of the College and Stryker Canada, congratulations, Ron, for your outstanding contributions to healthcare leadership. Thank you, Lindsay. Ron, can you uh, share with us today, what does it mean to you to have received this recognition? Well, thanks, Lindsay, and thanks, Stryker Canada, for uh, sponsoring this uh, very prestigious award. Um, it's an honor to be recognized by the college board and one's peers in receiving the college's Distinguished Leadership Award. Throughout my career, I've worked to align with a servant-based model of leadership that has aligned well with the college's values and leads framework. During my career journey, I've had the privilege of working with many amazing leaders. As we seek out our vocations, there is no greater success than to find one's calling and to pursue work that gives purpose and meaning to one's contributions. We're all given this privilege and opportunity to serve in the development and delivery of healthcare services and to provide leadership from any level. We're not always in great situations in this challenging environment, but our resilience will always be tested which is a key ingredient to our leadership. As one of my colleagues would, would always say, blossom where you are planted and you will persevere. It is humbling to receive this award from the college and my peers. However, the college has given me much more in terms of its development programs, including leads, CHE, fellowship, chapter events, volunteer opportunities, and a network of resources and peers, many of whom will have 
and be supports both professionally and personally throughout my life and um, those that are engaged with the college. So thank you very much. Thanks, Ron. What top piece of advice would you give to emerging leaders in the healthcare sector? Well, I would say that uh, as we've experienced during COVID is uh, developing one's resilience. Uh, throughout your career, you will have uh, bumps in your career, you will have changes and challenges, uh, but if you persevere with your resilience, it will get you through the, uh, the tough times to continue to evolve your career. And, I, and also stay engaged with, with, uh, with the college or other, other groups that allow you to connect with peers because they will create a support system for you and be a source of learning, uh, a source of professional development and, uh, and uh, emotional support for you as, as you progress. Thank you, Ron. I think we've all had a lesson in resilience over the past uh, 16 months. Congratulations once again. Do you have any closing remarks to share with us tonight? Yes, uh, thanks, Lindsay. Well, thank you to the college and, and Stryker uh, for sponsoring this award and for honoring me with this prestigious award. I'm honored to receive this award as a demonstration of the importance of leadership as an endorsement of the role of our professional health leaders play in transforming our healthcare system. This award embodies the college's lead framework through leading oneself through challenging times and continuous professional development, fostering the development of others, achieving results through mentorship, developing collaborations, and enhancing our members' competencies to create system transformation. Leadership is not confined to one's title. It can come from the front line right up to the boardroom. Healthcare is a privilege to serve. We can provide leadership from various roles within an organization, partnership, or consortium of providers. I wish our current and future leaders personal and professional success in being able to spend your life in your own way and enjoying what one does and accomplishes. Enjoy your full life's journey, not necessarily the destination of a title. I've been acknowledged for my efforts in achieving a number of professional and academic credentials. But as my recently departed 90 year old mother would say, and, and she actually was not able to even attend high school due to uh, economic and geographic barriers. She would always remind me that the academic and professional world may give you many letters behind your name. Just remember that your life and career lessons will teach you the rest of the alphabet. So continue to learn. Thanks, Lindsay. Ron, thank you so much. And, uh, you know, it's the word lifetime that really strikes me here um, in terms of you've been at it for such a long time across the whole continuum of care and uh, certainly a very deserving uh, recipient of this award. And uh, Lindsay and Stryker, thank you again very much. I'm now very pleased to move on to the President's Award. At the college, we are very fortunate to have many dedicated corporate partners whose membership and support make so many of our programs and services possible. The President's Award is given annually to a corporate member who has supported the college activities and programs in a tangible manner. Le prix du Président pour rapport exceptionnel au collège rend hommage à un membre corporatif qui, depuis plusieurs années, aide constamment le collège à ré réaliser sa mission, sa vision et ses orientations stratégiques. This year, we are so pleased and proud to celebrate and recognize Roche Canada. Through their financial support as title sponsor, Roche was instrumental in the delivery of our first virtual BC Health Leaders Conference in 2020. And we're very pleased today to announce that Roche has graciously agreed once again to be the title sponsor for this year's Canada West Health Leaders Conference in October 2021. They are also proud sponsors of our national and exclusive HPRS events, our Coaches Corner sessions at the National Conference and the National Mentorship Award. Roche, a global pharmaceuticals and medical diagnostics leader, has been a corporate member of the college since 2005. Andrew Plank, President and General Manager of Roche Canada, is a member of our Corporate Advisory Council. Francois Drolet, Director of Public Affairs, is an ex officio member of our Mentorship Award Selection Committee and a very avid full-time cheerleader for the college. Congratulations to Roche Canada. I now invite Andrew and De Francois to join me on the virtual stage for a short Q&A. Monsieur, bonjour. Gentlemen, nice to see you both. I'm going to start with uh, Francois. And Francois, my question to you is, 
what is the greatest value of corporate membership uh, with the college to your organization? Bonsoir, Alain, and uh, good evening, everyone, uh, on, on the virtual event tonight. First and foremost, I would like to thank the college, uh, knowing many, if not most, of the college's corporate members were truly humbled and honored to, honored to receive this award tonight. And back to your question, uh, and without hesitation, for me and for us at Roche, uh, it is about access to an incredible network of fantastic leaders. Uh, through the many forums offered by the college, you mentioned a few, you know, we have the opportunity to exchange and engage uh, with, with those leaders, share best practices, and, and ultimately pick the best brains in our field to ultimately achieve our collective objective of transforming healthcare together. Thank you for those heartfelt words. And uh, I'm going to go over to uh, Andy now and, and ask you, what would you tell a prospective corporate member that is considering joining the college? Thank you, Alay. So uh, it's an honor and privilege to receive the award and, and we're grateful for the opportunity to partner with the college. Uh, to prospective corporate members, you know, I would say the following. I think in addition to the networking that uh, Francois touched on, if your organization's mission, vision, or purpose would benefit from advancing leadership and working together to help shape the healthcare system, I think you'd benefit from corporate membership in the college. And I'd also say that, you know, more than 70 companies have chosen to become corporate members and they do benefit from sponsorship, branding and learning. But but I really see that the, the nationwide membership and the connections you make across all sectors of healthcare can really set you up for learning business opportunities and new partnerships that can benefit the healthcare system and the patients that we all serve. And so if I can be of, uh, of help, I'd be happy to be a reference uh, or a resource for anyone considering membership. Thank you so much. And uh... I'll return to, uh, to Francois and then back to you, uh, Andy, for just a few seconds of closing remarks. But the restriction, and I've made this clear to Francois, is he's not allowed to talk about the Montreal Canadiens. <laughs> thank you, and I was almost tempted to thank you for scheduling the event <laughs> soon enough so we can catch the Habs game on the back end of the program. Exactly. But anyway, exactly. yeah, so th thank, you. thank you once more uh, to, to the college. It's always a pleasure to further our partnership and you can definitely count on me and Roche to continue being uh, maybe a cheerleader, but certainly a champion for the college. Thank you. Thank you. Over to Andy. Yeah, I just would say, you know, on behalf of Roche Canada, thank you, Alay. Thank you, Marianne, and your teams uh, for the great work you're doing to really live the college's mission and recognizing excellence in health leadership. We appreciate it. Um, you know, we're grateful and honored with this award in part because we're fortunate to be in a position where we can contribute to the college in a meaningful way. Uh, and my commitment is that we'll remain active uh, corporate members well into the future. Thank you. Merci, monsieur, and thank you both very much. We love uh, working with you. We'll look forward to seeing you live on stage at the gala next year. And on that, I'm going to hand the podium back to Marianne Walker. Okay. Thank you, Andrew and Francois. Congratulations, Roche Canada. Elaine, you know, Alain, we are so fortunate to have such caring corporate supporters, and together we really make a difference. Well, you know, they, they've, they were such a boost to us for the BC Conference, and I've told them many times, and uh, we, we just uh, were happy to celebrate uh, the relationship that we have. So thank you for that, and uh, back to you. The Canadian College of Health Leaders is proud to announce the recipient of the 2021 Chapter Awards for Distinguished Service. This award provides an opportunity for chapters to recognize locally and nationally the individuals who have made a significant contribution to their chapter. The recipients have been selected by the respective chapters in recognition of their involvement in college activities and for their leadership in educational programming member recruitment or other areas of volunteer contribution. Congratulations to BC Interior Chapter, Chris, Chris Jansen, BC Lower Mainland Chapter, Juliet Batke, Blue Nose Chapter, Christina German, Greater Toronto Area Chapter, Jillian Chandler, Hamilton and Area Chapter, Emmy Perkins, Manitoba Chapter, Matthew Reimer. Newfoundland and Labrador Chapter, Judy O'Keefe. Northern Alberta Chapter, Catherine York. 
Northern and C Central Saskatchewan chapter, Sandra Bethlands. Chapitre du Quebec, Lise Lamotte. Don't laugh, Alain. I'm not. Okay. Southern Alberta chapter, Mike Lamacchia. Southwestern Ontario chapter, Michael Lessinger. Vancouver Island chapter, Cindy Triton. Congratulations to all. The Healthcare Management Forum Article of the Year Award is focused on honoring a journal author whose article has helped to challenge the traditional notions of health leadership and motivate transformational behavior. The Article of the Year Award highlights an original article published in the preceding year, which has helped inspire meaningful reform and contains findings which apply to multiple sectors within healthcare. Thank you to Sage Publishing for sponsoring this award. Stage Publishing, I'm honored to present the 2021 Healthcare Management Forum Article of the Year Award. This year's winning author is Dr. Stephen L. Archer for his article entitled, Providing Care for the 99.9% .9 During the COVID-19 Pandemic, How Ethics, Equity, Epidemiology, and Cost for Quality Adjusted Life Year Inform Healthcare Policy. The most downloaded ethics column of 2020, Dr. Archer's piece was chosen because it tackles the timely system level issue of developing balanced healthcare policies that are nationally aware but locally informed. Dr. Archer is the head of the Department of Medicine at Queen's University and the program medical director for Kingston Health Sciences Center. Congratulations. Thanks very much, Lauren. So what are your article's main takeaways for health leaders? Well, uh, the main takeaways are that this is a very complicated uh, pandemic we're in but we can't stop uh, providing care for people with the many other diseases other than COVID-19. And while that seems very obvious, I think there's a tendency for people that want to be compliant with public health measures to err on the side of shutting everything down. But meanwhile, people are having heart attacks, strokes, getting cancer. And if we weren't careful, and I think we've been reasonably careful, but if they weren't, if we weren't careful and balanced, we could end the year with having not so many people die of COVID, but many more people die of all those diseases that normally kill people. And so it challenges us to be compliant with public health, but at the same time acknowledge that we've got to still be opening arteries that are blocked in hearts and seeing patients in clinic and everything cannot be done by video. Otherwise, we're sort of penny wise and pound foolish. Well, thank you so much for sharing with us. Congratulations again, Dr. Archer. Do you have any closing remarks to share? Well, I'd like to thank the journal for giving me this honor and also thank Renata Ilsa, who's one of our VPs. And Renata approached me one day and said, could you write something about your opinions? Because I write a blog for my department every day or twice a week now on COVID to make sure there's a rational feed so we communicate clearly with each other during the pandemic. And she said, would you mind writing this article? And so I set about doing it and it was educational for me and I'm very grateful for this honor. Thanks so much. Congratulations, Dr. Archer, and thank you so much, uh, Sage, for sponsoring this award. Our journal is going gangbusters, and you should download it every time it comes out. The Celebrating the Human Spirit Award recognizes and honors the meaningful contributions of individuals or teams who provide health services for acts of caring and compassion that go above and beyond the call of duty, which inspire others and have a profound and lasting impact. Ce prix reconnaît les actes d'individus exceptionnels qui améliorent la vie ou le moral des patients ou de la vie de la famille du patient ou de la collectivité. Ce prix vise à partager leurs histoires avec leurs collègues partout au Canada et d'aider à inspirer les autres. Thank you to High Rock for sponsoring this award. Hello everyone. At Huroc, we are determined to work together to bring positive change to the healthcare sector and to assist the sector in turning the corner on patient safety. <clears throat> this is why it's such a privilege for us to sponsor the college's Celebrating the Human Spirit Award. I am proud to announce that Shaila Jiwa, Senior Practice Leader for the Provincial Health Services Authority's Office of Virtual Health in British Columbia, has been named as the 2021 recipient. In her previous role as Senior Practice Lead for Provincial Tuberculosis Services at the BC Centre for Disease Control, Shiloh was an advocate to ensure communities receive the highest level of care 
and she has actively sought input and feedback from effective, affected communities to improve clinical services across BC. Congratulations, Shyla. Shyla, this award honors health leaders for acts of caring and compassion that go above and beyond the call of duty, which inspire others. Can you tell us about who or what inspires you? Yes, absolutely. Um, my family, specifically my husband and my two kids, inspire me. Uh, my kids are the light of my life. They teach me so much about myself and about what really matters in life. I strive to do better in large part because of them. Also, working alongside incredibly talented colleagues inspires me. I've been very lucky to work alongside individuals who advocate for improved client care, for quality and for innovation, who advocate for health equity and for more culturally safe and appropriate healthcare services. Shayla, congratulations once again. It's a great pleasure for HEROC to be associated with this award and with you. Uh, thank you so much. Do you have any closing remarks? Thanks, Catherine. Uh, I just want to express my gratitude for this award. I'm mindful that there are countless other clinicians and leaders out there who are doing very inspiring work. So I'm extremely humbled by the recognition. I'm of course grateful to the Canadian College of Health Leaders and to HEROC. Uh, I'm grateful to my colleagues who took time out of their busy schedules to put forward a nomination on my behalf and during a pandemic no less. In many ways, they're a lot more deserving of this award than I am. I see this recognition as a reflection of my organization and of the leadership and clinical teams I've had the good fortune to be a small part of. This specifically includes everyone at Provincial TV Services at BCCBC. I'm overall just very grateful and will continue to bring forward my passion and dedication to supporting clinical practice in my career. Thank you. Congratulations, Shaila, for your caring contribution. You're making such a positive difference in so many people's lives. The Mentorship Award is presented to a leader in healthcare system who demonstrates exemplary, sustained commitment to mentoring and inspiring healthcare leadership. Winners of this award are recognized leaders who, through their dedicated service, have made a substantial contribution to healthcare mentorship within their own organization or within the health system. Thank you to Roche Kenda for sponsoring this award. Good evening. <coughs> I feel honored and privileged once again to present the CCHL Mentorship Award, which Roche has sponsored since its very inception. With our purpose of doing now what patients need next, we recognize that to truly improve our healthcare system, we must emphasize the importance of developing and mentoring our leaders. We are therefore delighted to recognize the contribution of an outstanding leader, Janet Edwards, CHE, for her steadfast dedication to the development and support of healthcare leaders through mentorship. She has been an inspirational steward of quality and patient safety for Manitoba's healthcare systems for decades. Congratulations to this year's Mentorship Award winner, Janet Edwards. Congratulations again, Janet. You just won the Mentorship Award, a tribute to your contribution over the years. But I'm curious um, to hear how you were yourself mentored during your career. A great question, Francois. As I reflect back on my career, I think there are two main issues to mentorship. One is people, and I've been mentored by leading physicians, um, leading team members, my own profession, but I've been also been mentored by a supportive system. So in my years, in my career in healthcare, I've been supported in a system that has really encouraged lifelong learning and supported me in not only learning through seminars, sessions, and so on, but also my ongoing continuing education. Thank you so much, Francois, for the kind words and to Roche for sponsoring this, what I feel is a very important Canadian College of Health Leaders Award. I certainly accept this award with a great deal of humility and want to thank all of those that I have worked with um, over the years, supported and mentored as we move forward in, in really developing a quality, safe, 
health system, not only in Manitoba, but across the country. Thank you. Jeanette, congratulations. You know, I met Jeanette at the Manitoba Annual General Meeting yesterday, and I have to tell you that the admiration and appreciation of all of our members in Manitoba was very, very obvious. So congratulations again. On to the Nursing Leadership Award, which in the context of the pandemic in this day and age could not be more important. This award builds on the themes of patient-centered care and leadership and honors those who demonstrate an ongoing commitment to excellence in these areas. Le prix de leadership en soins infirmiers met en valeur les thèmes des soins centrés sur les patients et du leadership et honore les personnes qui manifestent un engagement soutenu à l'égard de l'excellence dans ce domaine. Nos sincères remerciements à Baxter Canada pour leur soutien de ce prix. Baxter is pleased to sponsor this year's Nursing Leadership Award. Throughout our 85-year history in Canada, we have always been proud to partner with nurses who inspire, motivate, and drive excellence in the delivery of patient-centered care. This year's awards recipient is an incredible leader, innovator, and advocate of nursing in Alberta and throughout Canada. She is energetic and inspirational and has shaped the future of nursing care. I am delighted to recognize Deb Gordon, Vice President and Chief Operating Officer, Clinical Operations at Alberta Health Services, as a recipient of the 2021 Nursing Leadership Award. Congratulations, Deb. Thanks very much, Jane. So, Deb, considering the importance of having strong leadership in nursing profession and really the merits of the past award winners, what does winning this award mean to you? Well, I'm truly humbled and honored to accept this award this year. I have always been very proud to be a registered nurse and never more so than in these challenging times. The opportunity to lead and support nurses and all healthcare workers in their delivery of the best possible care is incredibly meaningful. That, that is actually, and you know, that, that is incredible, the work that you've done out in Alberta. So, you know, I, I do have to say congratulations again. Thank you. Your leadership has been paramount to Alberta's COVID-19 response. Can you share some of the successes and learnings that you've had this past year? Honestly, I have really just been one small part of an amazing team at Alberta Health Services that has delivered an outstanding province-wide integrated response to the pandemic. We've been involved in everything from assessment and <clears throat> testing through the contact tracing, ambulatory, acute, ICU, virtual health, and continuing in community care, and now on, of course, to vaccine delivery and recovery planning, and it has been amazing. Congratulations once again. Do you have any closing remarks you'd like to share with us? Thank you to the college, Baxter Canada, and those who nominated me. To me, this award represents ongoing commitment to quality patient-centered care, innovation, resiliency, and leadership. Over the last year, nurses and all healthcare workers have made absolutely outstanding contributions in caring for so many Canadians. I am proud, grateful, and inspired by their incredible work. I thank you for this acknowledgement and accept the award on behalf of all of them at Alberta Health Services and across our great country. Congratulations, Deb, for being recognized for your outstanding nursing leadership. Alain, you know that I'm so proud and humbled to be a nurse and to be to recognize and celebrate our outstanding nursing leaders. Well, at the script next year, Marianne, we'll have to make sure that you get to introduce this award. Okay, <laughs> thanks. The, uh, the next award, the Robert Z. Young Health Leader Award, is presented to a Canadian healthcare leader age 40 or younger who has demonstrated leadership in the effectiveness and sustainability of Canada's health system. Winners of this award have shown leadership growth and advancement in their healthcare career and have demonstrated outstanding vision and leadership that has resulted in measurable improvements within their organization or within the health system. Our sincere appreciation to Health Hub for their support of this award. Health Hub is delighted to support and recognize the outstanding achievements of Canada's young health leaders and to support the Robert Z. Young Health Leader Award. I'm very proud to announce that Samantha Hodder, CHE Senior Director, Mental Health and Addiction at Nova Scotia Health, has been named the 2021 recipient. 
Samantha is an exceptional young leader with a passion for improving care for individuals with mental illness and addictions and a commitment to service and excellence and evidence-informed strategic system changes. Congratulations, Samantha. I know that Robert was pleased to hear that a fellow Nova Scotian was a recipient of this award. Uh, Samantha, can you tell us more about your vision for mental health and addiction care for Nova Scotians? Sure, the vision is really about ensuring every person in Nova Scotia who needs mental health and addiction support or care receives the support from the right provider at the right time and the right place. Doing this really means collaborative relationships across the system and working with our partners in healthcare, in the community, government, and patient and family advisors to coordinate our services more fully across the continuum, right from health promotion to community-based supports to intensive clinical care. Can you tell me about a leader who's helped or inspired you on your healthcare journey here? I'm really lucky to have been surrounded by and work with extraordinary, dedicated, talented people throughout my career. They have and continue to inspire me with their professionalism and their commitment to improving the lives of people living with mental illness and, and addictions. That includes not only my current team, um, but also healthcare leaders who gave me room to grow, the executive and senior team at Nova Scotia Health, the IWK, the Nova Scotia Department of Health and Wellness, whose partnership, sponsorship, and support has been critical over these past few years. Samantha, congratulations once again. Do you have any closing marks you want to share with us? I would just like to say thank you, especially to my co-lead, Dr. Andrew Harris, who's the Senior Medical Director, to our mental health and addictions team, and to all of our partners in the system for the amazing work they've done and continue to do to bring our vision to life. I'd also like to acknowledge the Canadian uh, College for Health Leaders and for Health Hub for their sponsorship of this very important award. I'm both delighted and grateful. And on a personal note, I would like to acknowledge my family and thank them, especially my husband, Ryan, and daughter, Lucy. Samantha, congratulations. And you know, Marianne, with leaders like S Samantha, I think the system's in very good hands uh, going forward in the, in the next few years, but I'm also pleased to see that we're honoring leaders coast to coast. Our next award is the Award of Excellence in Mental Health Quality Improvement that honors a hospital, health authority, community-based program or service, or a leader in the field that demonstrates evidence-informed and sustained quality improvements in the area of mental health and addictions. Les récipiendaires de ce prix ont apporté dans leur système de santé des améliorations fondées sur des données probantes qui ont permis d'obtenir de meilleurs résultats pour les patients ayant des problèmes de santé mentale ou de toxicomanie. Nos sincères remerciements à la Commission de la santé mentale du Canada pour leur soutien de ce prix. La Commission de la santé mentale du Canada est fière d'appuyer, à titre de partenaire, le programme national des prix du collège. It is my honor to announce that the Addiction and Mental Health Locus Implementation Team at Alberta Health Services has been named as the 2021 recipient of the Award of Excellence in Mental Health Quality Improvement. LOCUS, the Level of Care Utilization System, systematically organizes addiction and mental health services to maximize support by matching services to client needs while ensuring they maintain choice and autonomy. Félicitations, congratulations. Melissa, could you tell us more about the impact of the LOCUS initiative? Absolutely. From the beginning, this has been a project that has challenged us as an organization to rethink the status quo. It provided a framework to build a searchable database of our programs organized by intensity of service offered and helped us to develop a common language and understanding to better articulate our clients' care needs. In addition to these impacts, the early data generated by the LOCUS tool has provided valuable insight into utilization at a systems level and highlighted potential gaps in service. What started as a tool has really evolved into a system-wide collaboration with effort across all of our programs and services to improve access and the patient experience. Congratulations again. Do you have any closing remarks for us? Thank you very much. I can't stress enough that this initiative is truly a team endeavor. Clinicians, staff, 
physicians, leaders, clients, and their families across all of our programs and services have collaborated, provided feedback, and adapted to bring this work forward. I really believe that we've just scratched the surface with this initiative, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing where it goes in the future. To close, I want to extend a huge thank you and a warm congratulations to Addiction and Mental Health across the Edmonton Zone for their outstanding work and ongoing effort. Congratulations to Alberta Health System for your commitment to support people most in need to improve their mental health. The Energy and Environmental Stewardship Award recognizes the progressive healthcare organization that has implemented programs that demonstrate environmental responsibility through the reduction of energy usage, preservation and natural resources, effective waste diversion solutions. One, our sincere appreciation to Honeywell for their outstanding support of this award. Honeywell is proud to support the Energy and Environmental Stewardship Award and to celebrate leadership in regards to environmental responsibility and the sharing of best practices. This year's award recipient was the first hospital in Ontario to achieve LEED certification, meaning leadership in energy and environmental design, and the first in Canada to achieve this certification at the silver level. This hospital has a deep embedded culture of environmental sustainability and continues to build upon that with green initiatives year after year. I'm pleased to announce that Woodstock Hospital is this year's recipient of the award. Congratulations. Thank you. Chris, perhaps you could tell us a bit more about your initiatives. Since Woodstock Hospital formed, our environmental advisory committee, a key focus has been building a culture that embraces change and is open to new ideas. Some of the most successful ideas have come from frontline staff. A good example of this is over the past few years, we've been able to increase our waste diversion from the landfill by 15% due to staff input. That success has only encouraged us to continue forward with our goal of a 50% waste diversion by 2025, and we are well on track to exceed this target. Other projects include the installation of 135 kilowatts of clean, renewable solar power, as you can see beside me. This solar array produces nearly 50% of electricity for the medical building we are currently standing in. The impact of projects such as this reaches not only the hospital itself, but the wider community. For example, when we installed 21 electric car chargers, this led to an increase in EV adoption on the site. The most important thing to note here is that this is not the end of our journey into sustainability, but actually the beginning of a long-term plan for environmental stewardship. Gary, congratulations once again. Do you have any final remarks to share with us? I would like to thank the Canadian College of Health leaders and Honeywell for recognizing our hospital's commitment to environmental stewardship. Environmental responsibility is deeply embedded in the hospital's culture. This is in thanks to the dedication and passion of the Woodstock Hospital's Environmental Advisory Committee the capital projects team, and the unwavering support from the senior team and the board of trust. We are proud of our successes and honored to be this year's recipient. Thank you. Congratulations, Woodstock Hospital. And I want to thank Louis at uh, Honeywell for his long, long standing uh, support. Uh, Louis has been with Honeywell for 40 years, and for a big part of that, he's been supporting the college. So, Louis, thank you very, very much. The Excellence in Diversity and Inclusion Award recognizes a forward-thinking healthcare organization that has demonstrated leadership in creating and promoting diversity and inclusion to improve the environment for its employees and to better service their customers, patients, and the community. Ce prix fait honneur à une organisation avant-gardiste qui fait preuve de leadership en créant et en encourageant la diversité et l'inclusion. Thank you to Sodexo. Merci à Sodexo Canada, le commanditaire de ce prix. We are very proud to sponsor the Excellent in Diversity and Inclusion Award again this year. 
At Sodexo, we live and work with diversity. Diversity is a non-negotiable, but inclusion is a choice. We purposefully build inclusive teams. They give us a competitive advantage and help us anticipate the needs of our clients and customers. The recipients of 2021 Excellent in Diversity Inclusion Award is Scarborough Health Network. Giving the diverse community they serve, the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and its impact on providing exceptional patient care is a strategic imperative for Scarborough Health Network. They have truly shown leadership and commitment in this area for many years, and their strategic direction speaks specially to an inclusive organizational culture, population health, and health equity. Congratulations. Thank you, Norm. And what what does it mean for you to have uh, won this award? Oh, this means a this means a lot to us because, um, especially at this time with the the COVID pandemic, it has really shone a light on some of the inequities in in the healthcare system. Um, and Scarborough is a very very diverse community with lots of vulnerable populations, and we've been one of the hardest hit communities with respect to COVID. Um, so winning this award just reinforces that um, at Scarborough Health Network, we understand the importance of recognizing diversity, because if we don't even recognize it, it's going to be really hard to overcome things like inequities. We have to, we have to call it out and we have to identify um, solutions that will make a difference. So um, in addition to our focus on workplace diversity and inclusion, we also have a focus on health equity, where we do a lot of education related to social determinants of health and how all of these things impact access to health care and ultimately health outcomes and population health. Do you have any other any other uh, closing remark you would like to share with us? Yes, I am honored and humbled to accept this award on behalf of Scarborough Health Network. Our workforce and the community we serve can be described as a vibrant cultural tapestry. Recognizing the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion, and its impact on providing an exceptional patient experience and high quality outcomes for the patients we serve is a strategic imperative for our hospital, even in a pandemic. I am immensely proud of the accomplishments of our caring staff and leaders who serve a community that is so deserving of excellence in diversity and inclusion. Thank you. Congratulations to Scarborough Health Network for achieving excellence in diversity and inclusion. This is so important. Alain, I think we can all learn from them. Absolutely. The Excellent in Patient Experience Award is focused on honoring organizations and individuals who have set in place innovations that improve human experience in healthcare. The award highlights and recognizes innovations that have made change to how patients and their families experience healthcare services. Thank you to Huron Advisors Canada Limited for sponsoring this award. Huron Advisors Canada Limited helps organizations move with urgency to achieve results, positively impacting patient safety, quality, and financial performance. We believe a strong and consistent focus on patient experience is more than just the right thing to do. There's a growing scientific evidence base that the provision of excellent patient experience is an absolute imperative to drive improved outcomes. This year's recipient recognizes that patients and families have experiential and organizational knowledge that when mobilized helps to improve the care relationship, structure, intervention processes, and management. With clinical administrative practices integrating this knowledge, the real needs of patients are better met. Congratulations to the 2021 recipient of the Excellence in Patient Experience Award. Félicitations à l'Orient de cette année. Le Centre Intégré de Santé et des Services Sociaux de Laval. Merci. Chantal et Benoît, pouvez-vous nous parler de l'impact de la mise en œuvre de votre partenariat de soins et services? Certainement. 
la valeur ajoutée du partenariat de soins et services est majeure, multidimensionnelle dans notre organisation. Les usagers partenaires nous rendent meilleurs par le partage de leur savoir expérientiel et ils sont partie prenante de notre établissement. Notre démarche en est une de tous les jours et en même temps, c'est une grande démarche organisationnelle, et tant au plan clinique, dans les soins et services, et également au niveau de la gestion de l'établissement. Toutes nos félicitations. Avez-vous des remarques finales à partager avec nous? Merci, Daniela. Alors oui, j'aimerais bien ajouter un dernier mot, d'une part pour dire que euh, ce... ce... Ce prix et, et ce projet du partenariat de soins et services a rejailli sur le CIS de Laval, mais a aussi permis à des usagers d'autres milieux de bénéficier du partenariat de soins et services parce qu'on a inspiré des, des, des documents du ministère qui ont servi de guide et on a été beaucoup sollicité par les autres établissements sur notre expérience. Donc, c'est au bénéfice des usagers partenaires et, de, et des usagers en général. Alors, il y a plusieurs personnes à remercier pour ça. Euh, D'abord, les usagers partenaires eux-mêmes, euh, les comités d'usagers, les comités de résidents, euh, tous nos employés, nos médecins, nos gestionnaires, nos bénévoles aussi, euh, les ambassadeurs, les, les membres du bureau de, du partenariat de soins, les équipes professionnelles qui ont soutenu la démarche, nos conseils professionnels, le conseil des infirmières et infirmiers, le conseil des médecins, dentistes et pharmaciens, ainsi que le conseil multidisciplinaire. Un merci particulier aussi à Christian Gagné, notre PDG, et au conseil d'administration pour leur appui indéfectible. Un, un merci à l'Université de Montréal, aux, aux professeurs qui ont beaucoup collaboré à la démarche, euh, au docteur Marie-Thérèse Lucier, qui a travaillé de très près, une de nos chercheurs aussi. Merci au ministère de la Santé et des Services sociaux du Québec de nous avoir soutenus. Un merci particulier à Benoît, l'âme de ce projet-là. Euh, un merci aussi à la Fondation Cité de la Santé qui, qui a soutenu financièrement euh, notre, notre projet. And finally, last but not least, I would like to address my many, many thanks to the Canadian College of Health Leaders who, with this award, recognizes our important achievement. I would like to address many thanks to to Danielle Lockhart, the Business Development Director from Neuron Advisors Canada Limited. Many thanks. Thank you very much. And finally, I would like to say that we share this award with all our services users. And together, we will continue our mission and to express our vision of excellence. So thank you very much. Quel plaisir de reconnaître nos collègues Leader en santé du Québec et félicitations au Centre intégré de santé et des services sociaux de Laval. Our next award is the Excellence in Patient Safety Award, which recognizes individuals and teams that are committed to improving patient safety through the healthcare environment, through leadership, culture, best practices, innovation, and change management expertise. Ce prix rend hommage aux individus ou aux équipes qui se sont engagés à améliorer la sécurité des patients dans le milieu de la santé par le leadership, la culture, les pratiques exemplaires, l'innovation et les compétences en matière de gestion du changement. Our sincere thanks to BD Canada for sponsoring and supporting this award. BD is a leader in patient and healthcare worker safety and we partner with organizations around the world to address some of the most challenging global health issues like medication safety, infection prevention, and antimicrobial resistance. BD is a proud sponsor of the college's Excellence in Patient Safety Award. We are delighted to honor a hospital where technology is being leveraged to achieve high reliability and to consistently deliver the safest and highest quality care. One of the most profound technological advancements that our award recipient has implemented to advance patient safety is the closed loop medication system. I am pleased to announce Humber River Hospital as the recipient of this year's award. Congratulations. What does it mean to you to have won this award? 
Well, we are thrilled with this award at Humber River. As North America's first fully digital hospital, we've been on a journey since we began designing the hospital almost 10 years ago. We've been on a journey of leveraging technology, lean, green, digital processes to achieve high reliability as a key strategic direction for the organization. That is to consistently deliver the safest, highest quality care. One of the most profound technological advancements Humber has implemented to advance its safety agenda is this closed loop medication system. The details regarding our journey and five years of data to evaluate our outcomes has really demonstrated to all of us the adoption of the closed loop medication system at Humber has prevented hundreds of medication errors and improved the safety practice in the environment. Validation by the Canadian College of Healthcare Leaders by providing Humber with the Excellence of the Patient Safety Award recognizes our innovation and our commitment to high reliability and the team uh, very much values that recognition. Congratulations once again, Barb. Do you have any closing remarks you'd like to share with us? Well, I'd just like to say that these journeys take a lot of people and a lot of time and a committed team. And so um, my thanks, first of all, to the team at Humber River Hospital who had the desire to try to resolve issues, hundreds of people that came together collectively from pharmacy and patient care and physicians and the IT group and the process engineers who worked together with a belief that they could improve patient safety using this system and they have done so and having their work recognized is very important to them. And then we will thank our industry partners who also helped us develop prepackaged drug systems, robotic systems that allow us to label the drugs, robots to deliver the drugs to the patient care unit. Not only is it a safer, it's also a more efficient system. And so I thank all of the people that came together and are still committed to improving our safety every day. Congratulations to Humber River Hospital and for your commitment and innovation in keeping patients safe. The recognition in delivering value-based healthcare aims to increase the profile and understanding of value-based healthcare by honoring an organization or team that is deliberate in changing the way that care is delivered, resulting in improved patient outcomes. This means that the patients are being optimally cared for at the right time, in the right setting, at the right cost. Our sincere appreciation to Medtronic Canada for their support of this recognition. Medtronic is proud to sponsor the Canadian College of, of Health Leaders National Awards Program and to recognize organizations that are changing the way care is delivered, resulting in improved patient outcomes. This year, we're particularly pleased to announce that the recipient of this year's recognition in delivering value-based healthcare is the Cardiac Rehab and Secondary Prevention Program at the Scarborough Health Network. The team developed an evidence-based service to improve access, quality of care, resource utilization, cost effectiveness, and importantly, the viability and scalability of the regional coordinated cardiovascular rehab system. Dr. Joe Ricci, congratulations to you and your team. Dr. Ricci, your initiative provided great enhancements to access. Could you talk more about how you're able to respond to the challenges faced because of the COVID-19 pandemic? Sure, thank you, Neil. Each year, over 3,700 individuals participate in our region-wide community-based rehabilitation system. Over the past two years, we had enhanced the service to include interactive technologies, including a Get Heart, Heart Healthy website, instructional videos, interactive video meetings, and a unique mobile application. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, we were forced to stop our on-site programming. And using interactive technologies that we developed, we transformed to a virtual delivery system in approximately two days. This experience has been so positive that based on this experience, we're planning to use a hybrid of on-site and virtual services when the pandemic precautions end and we return to normal services. That is very impressive. Thank you. Congratulations to you, Dr. Ricci. Any closing remarks that you'd like to share with us? Yes, thank you, Neil. I, I think we, we believe strongly that shifting the focus of healthcare delivery from individual care to population-based health impacts and changing from institutional settings to community settings improves our 
ability to deliver high quality care. We believe that regional, regionally coordinated systems can improve access to life-saving services like this and can decrease the overall health burden. Um, I, I would like to close by thanking the remarkable contributions of many people, including Trixie Williams, our program director, Adam Pierce, our program manager, our remarkable staff, and the hundred or more volunteers that work with us across the region to make this service uh, even better than we could accomplish alone. And I'd like to thank the um, awards committee for having considered our uh, work as worthy of this um, award. Congratulations to Scarborough Health Network, one of tonight's multiple award recipients. We have been celebrating and showcasing the success of the recipients of the 3M Healthcare Quality Team Awards since 1994. It has been tremendously rewarding to see quality take its permanent place on the agenda of healthcare leaders, and we thank 3M Canada for their continued support. We are delighted to honor the recipients of these awards as part of our Honoring Health Leadership Ceremony tonight. The 3M Healthcare Quality Team Awards celebrate innovation, quality, teamwork, and patient and family engagement. Given the continuing challenges we all face in healthcare, it's vital that we take time to celebrate and to learn from initiatives that use creative thinking and collaboration as effective tools to improve the delivery of programs and services. Although two special initiatives are being honored today, we would like to thank all of those who submitted nominations. Our selection committees have the enormous task of reviewing and ultimately choosing only two programs for special recognition. The 3M Awards booklet available on the CCHL website includes summaries of all this year's nominations. I encourage you to read it and consider how these initiatives could be implemented within your organizations. The 3M Healthcare Quality Team Awards are presented in two categories, quality improvement initiatives across a health system and quality improvement initiatives within an organization. It gives me great pleasure to announce Alberta Health Services Connect Care as the recipient in the quality improvement initiatives across a health system category. Congratulations. Thank you, Drew. We're very honored to receive this award. Barb, can you tell us a little bit more about the impact of the Connect Care initiative in Alberta? Uh, yeah, sure. We're um, the impact is is growing as we expand uh, Connect Care across the province, uh, across a continuum of care. So we hear um, daily about the ease of access to information, um, both for our clinicians and and prescribers, the physicians and staff, as well as um, patients and their families. Right, we have a growing number of patients and families using the patient tab, the patient portal, my my HS Connect. Uh, to support their their health um, their health information needs across their healthcare journeys as well. So every day the health information access gets a bit easier. Um, the tools and the um, the clinical guidance uh, at the fingertips for people to make clinical decisions at the point of care has been another really uh, great feature of Connect Care. Congratulations once again to you and the AHS team. Do you have any closing remarks to share with us? Yes, thank you. I just wanted to again thank the Canadian College of Health Leaders for recognizing Alberta Health Services with this year's 3M Healthcare Quality Team Award for quality improvement across the health system for our Connect Care Wave 1 implementation. We are very honored. When we first embarked on our Connect Care journey towards a new paperless way of using and sharing health information, improve the quality of care, as well as uh, better partner with our patients and families uh, with shared information, we knew it would be a colossal project and a bold province-wide initiative, and, and that it has been. Um, and it is with great pleasure and pride that I accept this award on our behalf and um, on, on behalf of the HS teams who do amazing work every day. So thank you. I'm pleased to announce that the 2021 recipient of the 3M Healthcare Quality Team Awards in the Quality Improvement Initiatives within an organization category is Nova Scotia Health's Newcomer Health Clinic. Congratulations. Great. Thank you very much. Colton, could you share your thoughts on how this project could be implemented in other institutions or provinces? Absolutely, yeah. So I think my one of my key recommendations would be to, to build partnerships. Um, so recognizing that refugees and newcomers have unique specific health needs and priorities and the resettlement process has unique challenges. My first recommendation would be to bring together um, providers, partners across the system uh, who have a role to play and build a plan to 
uh, understand the patient's journey uh, within primary health care and across the system. Colton, congratulations once again to you and the Nova Scotia Health team. Do you have any final remarks to share with us? Yeah, thanks so much. Um, yeah, I would say Newcomer Health Clinic is really an extraordinary team. Uh, and it's been an amazing experience being part of this team's development and evolution over a, a pretty short history since 2014. Uh, this team uh, responded to, to identified needs facing members of our community, um, but also embraced a continuous quality improvement approach uh, and partnership with our research and innovation colleagues from the very beginning. Um, we, uh, we use ongoing engagement, value stream mapping, rapid PDSA cycles and monitoring. Um, and, and as a result of that, the team has uh, documented and, and built a really in-depth understanding of the patient journey across the system um, to evolve our, our work to a model that, uh, that really works across the system and with community um, to provide timely access to, to the supports that, uh, that our populations need. Um, so I, I know I speak for everyone when I say thank you to 3M and, and the Canadian College of Health leaders. Uh, we're so very grateful for this recognition and I know this will energize us to continue to innovate uh, and develop and share our learnings with our colleagues. So thank you again. Congratulations to Alberta Health Services and Nova Scotia Health on your amazing innovative achievements. For over six decades, Johnson & Johnson has been recognizing outstanding talent within Canada's Master of Health Administration programs. Every year, we are privileged to welcome the recipients of the Robert Wood Johnson Awards into our community of health leaders. I'd like to thank Johnson & Johnson Medical Devices Companies for their continued support. On behalf of the Johnson & Johnson Medical Devices Companies of Canada, I'm delighted to recognize some up-and-coming difference makers in health leadership. Established in 1956, the Robert Wood Johnson Awards are presented to six students from Canadian universities offering Master of Health Administration. Recipients are selected by their respective faculty for their individual achievements and promising contributions to health services management. It is vital that we recognize excellence and support our emerging leaders. Congratulations to this year's Robert Wood Johnson Awards recipients. These individuals are joining an exclusive group of health leaders, and we look forward to following each of their careers into the future. Congratulations to Claudia Louise Cote from Dalhousie University. Claudia completed her Bachelor of Science at McGill University in 2012, followed by her Doctor of Medicine degree at Dalhousie University in 2016. She then continued on and pursued her subspecialty training in cardiac surgery, during which time she undertook a Master of Health Administration degree at the same institution. She is currently completing her thesis examining the social determinants of adverse outcomes in patients undergoing aortic surgery in Nova Scotia. Congratulations. Thank you. I would like to thank the members of the Dalhousie Master of Health Administration faculty for nominating me for this prestigious award. I would also like to thank Johnson & Johnson and the Canadian College of Health Leaders for sponsoring this award. I would also like to thank my husband, Samuel Jessula, who is my main support person in everything that I do. As a resident physician in cardiac surgery, my journey through the Master of Health Administration program has enriched my training greatly. I've been able to grow my research experience through the thesis curriculum and acquire new skills in leadership, administration, and management that will serve me as a physician leader in the future. My health administration residency with Heart Health has broadened the scope of my skills to make me a more effective agent in change for Nova Scotians with cardiovascular disease. Congratulations to Anthony Lee from the University of British Columbia. After graduating from UBC with a Bachelor of Science in Pharmacy, Anthony became registered with the College of Pharmacists of British Columbia in 2014. Since graduation, he has practiced pharmacy in numerous settings, including retail and independent community practice. As a UBC Master of Health Administration student, Anthony has taken on additional roles, including contributing to interprofessional graduate program development in the UBC School of Population and Public Health. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm absolutely honored to be a recipient of this award, and I want to thank Johnson & Johnson for their sponsorship, along with the Canadian College of Health Leaders and the University of British Columbia. 
I originally began my journey in the UBC Master of Health Administration program in order to enhance my potential as a healthcare leader and to be able to effectively contribute to advancements in our healthcare system. I believe the program has empowered me with the tools to do this, and I want to sincerely thank the UBC MHA instructors and administrators for making all of this possible and for their ongoing and tireless support. I also want to thank my wonderful colleagues in the MHA program, as well as my professional mentors. You have all taught me so much over the last couple of years, and it has been an absolute pleasure working alongside all of you. The last year has demonstrated the resiliency of our healthcare system and its capacity for change. Together, I believe we can make the future brighter than ever. Congratulations and felicitations to Jalila Mafoum from Université de Montréal. Jalila is a young Montrealer who obtained a Bachelor of Science from the Faculty of Nursing at the University of Montreal back in 2019. She then continued her studies in the Master of Health Services Administration at the School of Public Health of the University of Montreal. Jalila currently works at the Montreal Public Health Department managing cases affected by COVID-19. Félicitations encore, Jalila. Bonjour. Hello, everyone. I am truly uh, a grateful and honored to be one of the recipients of the 2021 Robert Wood Johnson Prize. I want to take a moment to thank Johnson & Johnson and the Canadian College of Health Leaders. Je tenais également à remercier les professeurs de l'École de santé publique de l'Université de Montréal ainsi que mes pères. On a pu apprendre ensemble, grandir et s'entraider. Et je peux dire que je suis fière de la relève des leaders en santé avec laquelle je serai honorée de euh, collaborer dans les années à venir. Je tiens également à remercier mes mentors et particulièrement Mme Lucie Tremblay que j'ai eu la chance de côtoyer ces dernières années et qui m'a fait confiance pour travailler avec elle sur un projet merveilleux au sein de sa direction. Finalement, je voulais remercier mes amis, ma famille pour leur amour et leur soutien inconditionnel. En tant que futur leader en santé, je m'engage à déployer mes connaissances et mes compétences pour que l'on puisse main dans la main avancer en mobilisant des leviers euh, politiques et ainsi que l'innovation afin de contribuer à ce que la population reçoive des soins de qualité qui sont inclusifs euh, et qui sont euh, empreintes d'humanité. Je continuerai d'agir en amont sur les déterminants de la santé afin de réduire les inégalités sociales et de contribuer à l'amélioration de l'accessibilité aux soins par tous. Un grand merci tout le monde. Thank you everyone. Congratulations to Mara Steiner from the University of Alberta. Originally from Medicine Hat, Mara Steiner is a second year Master of Public Health student at the University of Alberta, specializing in health policy and management. Prior to entering her MPH, Mara previously completed a bachelor's degree in science, majoring in biology and minoring in philosophy. Most recently, she completed her practicum with the Clinical Ethics Service at Alberta Health Services, giving her the opportunity to learn and work on policy from an ethics lens. Congratulations. Thank you. I feel very honored and excited to have been selected to receive this award. I would first like to thank the sponsor, Johnson & Johnson Medical Devices Companies, along with the Canadian College of Health Leaders and the wonderful faculty at the School of Public Health at the University of Alberta. The past two years have provided me with so many unique learning and leadership opportunities for which I am very grateful for. Thank you again. Congratulations to Sean O'Reilly from the University of Ottawa. Sports have always been important to Sean, which is why he completed a Bachelor of Physical and Health Education and a Bachelor of Life Sciences from Queen's University. He later completed the Diagnostic Cardiac Sonography program at Mohawk College and has since then enjoyed over eight years of providing cardiac ultrasounds at the Ottawa Heart Institute and Renfrew Victoria Hospital. Sean has recently completed his Master of Health Administration from the Telfer School of Management at the University of Ottawa. Congratulations. I would like to start by thanking Johnson & Johnson for sponsoring the Robert Wood Johnson Award and to the CCHL for hosting a platform to recognize all of the incredible recipients of the awards this evening and all of the healthcare leaders of Canada. I would like to thank the faculty and administration at the Telfer School of Management at the University of Ottawa for not only selecting me as this year's recipient, but also for seeing my potential and helping me grow throughout the course of the program. I would like to thank my classmates for our conversations and for our work together over the past two years. Your opinions, views, and inputs have helped me to expand my perspectives and help change my way of thinking. I would like to thank my family for their continued support over the past two years, especially my wife, Sabrina, who is my biggest supporter and who encouraged me to focus and challenge myself when I didn't think I could do it myself. Thank you. 
and congratulations to Christine McGovern from the University of Toronto. Christine started her career at SickKids as a registered nurse. She became deeply involved in the care of children who have complex medical conditions and is passionate about caring for those with cystic fibrosis. Today, Christine is a clinical manager for the SickKids COVID-19 Testing Centre and Community Outreach in Toronto. She holds a Bachelor of Science in Nursing and is currently completing her Master of Health Science at the University of Toronto. Congratulations. Thank you so much to the Canadian College of Health Leaders, the University of Toronto and Johnson & Johnson. I am overwhelmed and honored to be nominated and awarded the prestigious Robert Johnson Award. This is only made possible because of the support, growth, love and learnings from my friends, family, colleagues, professors and mentors. Thank you to the IHPME Health Administration faculty for your wisdom and knowledge over the last two years. Thank you to my, my classmates who have all left such a positive and unforgettable impact on my life. You are my inspirations forever. Thank you to my family and my partner for their unwavering support in my school and career paths. From all of you, I have learned the future of healthcare lies in the collective magic of teamwork, leveraging each other's strengths, and eliminating silos to challenge the status quo of healthcare delivery. When I think back to this award, I promise to always be inspired to drive change for equity, diversity, inclusion, and access to care for all. Thank you once again, and congratulations to all the recipients. Congratulations to the recipients of the Robert Wood Johnson Awards. Way to go. Alain, we are so fortunate to have so many outstanding leaders that will help improve our healthcare system. I think I'm going to go hire all of them for to work at the college, Marianne. Yeah, or no, I want them. Okay, you can have them first and then I'll take them later. <laughs> okay, uh, congratulations to all our 2021 award winners recognized this evening. Your achievements and leadership are so impressive. Thank you for making a difference. Alain, it's been a delight to host the ceremony with you and to hear from such an inspirational group of leaders. What an amazing virtual event. Well, thank you so much, Marianne, and thank you to our entire team for putting this together. Of course, we'd prefer to be on the stage together, but hopefully this, uh, this has been a meaningful event for all those who've received awards. And thank you, Marianne, for co-hosting this with me. And I'm just so pleased that we've recognized health leaders from coast to coast and across the continuum of care. Félicitations à tous. As evidenced by the testimonials we have seen and heard tonight, our healthcare systems are being led by extraordinary individuals whose passion and expertise will have long-lasting positive impacts on patient care in this country. We encourage you to consider nominating individuals, teams, and organizations worthy of recognition in next year's 2022 National Awards Program. For nomination information, please visit the awards section of the CCHL website. At the college, we're all about bringing the best possible leadership to the best care for our friends, family, loved ones, and communities. We are focused on building a college that is strong and unified, and that positions us as a connected and growing movement, and the best source for empathetic and responsive support for our members and for health leaders across the country. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We look forward to seeing you next year. Mesdames et messieurs, merci de votre participation et au plaisir de vous revoir l'année prochaine.